really happy to have you here. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very Next, much. Next, we have Brian Cardell from Igalia uh, on a, a video he recorded. And the work that we do with Igalia, we've been working with them for a couple of years. If you don't know who they are, uh, I'm not surprised. They are not a browser vendor. They're not a mega billion dollar company. Uh, they're a name that very few people have heard unless you actually work on the web platform itself, where Agalia has, uh, they are committers to WebKit, Chromium, and Gecko. So we work with them, and uh, when we encounter paper cuts in the web platform, uh, either inconsistencies in the security model of the web, uh, in interoperability problems or compatibility problems in browsers that prevent us from doing distributed web work, we work with Agalia to get those problems fixed. And that not only helps IPFS, but it also helps all of the other alternative non-HTTP protocols that are trying to work within the context of the web platform today. Um, so this is very important work and uh, uh, it's really a pleasure to be able to have Brian explain what Agalia is and what they do and some of the things that we've done together. Okay, so I am Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate at Egalia. Uh, this is my domain if you wanna learn more about me. And I'm gonna talk about decentralization and not just the distributed web, but also this other kind of centralization, uh, which is that like everyone relies on the web. Uh, there are thousands of organizations built on these foundational web standards. There are hundreds of orgs that participate in standards bodies that make them, but then there are you know historically even fewer that make a browser and even fewer still that make a browser engine. So we talk about these browser vendors, but we don't talk very much about, you know, how they have budgets and where do those budgets come from? And the fact that those budgets are managed and spent in the way that software projects are, they have different departments with different managers and skills, people with different skill sets. And, you know, everyone is trying to manage them independently. And it's only ultimately a standard if everyone makes it through all of the gauntlets. And so, things get really backed up and vendors are you know less likely to take the time to diverge from working the current backlog or things that they already think are important to discuss new things especially big things that would you know involve hard problems like decentralizing the web itself so you know we all wait and we all hope that they do it we lobby them to do it but ultimately this is also a feedback loop and you know things just get worse so even small things can wind up lingering without a final implementation, which costs us all, which really kind of sucks that we've created this, you know, sort of centralized choke point of where we can progress. So um, I'm super grateful that we have gotten this far with that model, but just imagine that we could fix this, improve it. Well, we can, and the reason that we can is because things have gotten progressively more open. Uh, over the course of the lifetime of the web, we've gotten to the point where all of the standards implementations are now open. And uh, to illustrate why I think this is important, I don't know if you are familiar with CSS Grid. When it landed in 2017, everyone was like, wow, everybody did it and it's magic and it's our favorite thing ever. People still talk about it in my timeline on Twitter every day. Uh, but this has origins going back to 1996. There were failed attempts along the way, but this time it worked. What was different? Um, well, in fairness, multiple variables, but really one core critical one is that things are open. And so other people can contribute. And that is what we did. Uh, Egalia did the work to contribute to implementations of CSS Grid. Uh, we did that with funding from Bloomberg Tech. So thank you for that. But what I'm trying to point out here is that a lot of things aren't sort of stuck over politics or these big strategic gyrations that we imagine. Uh, this just there's way more practical things. <laughs> they just can't get prioritized. This is very mundane sorts of things about prioritization that hold us back a lot. And that's what Egalia does. We are cooperative of developers all over the world and we specialize in web browsers. We're trusted committers everywhere and we contribute to all of the engines. And when I say we contribute, I mean we contribute a lot. Um, these are just two graphs that I have handy. Um, the one on the left shows our contributions to WebKit where the orange, uh, the light blue is uh, Apple. You can see what a big slice of the pie that is. Uh, on the right are the last two years of commits. These do not include Google uh, in Chromium, but they do include everybody who isn't Google. And you can see that the blue is Egalia and the red is Microsoft. Now, Microsoft will probably pass us up, but just to give you an idea of the level of commitment that we're playing in multiple browsers, all of the browsers really. 
Um, so it's, it's pretty significant. We work on all of the standards bodies and we help bring priority to things that uh, browser vendors can't prioritize themselves. This has been really successful. If I create a list, it would fill several slides, but here's just a couple that I think are fun that we've done in the past year or so. Um, and another thing is we love the hard problems. We love the big problems, things like MathML. MathML is really historically unique. Um, it and SVG are two things that are actually directly integrated into the HTML parser, um, but it was in a really hard problem and Egalia has really helped with that. Um, other things like container queries, Egalia really helped move that conversation by giving it priority. Um, uh, everybody's really excited, including us, about uh, Miriam Suzanne's work with Google. Uh, but, you know, our proposals and prioritization helped push that from the outside a little bit. And in fact, we demonstrated a working prototype in Chromium the same week that they announced taking up the better proposal. So um, also has, which is like parent or ancestor selectors, uh, have been in and out of CSS selector specifications since the late 90s. Nobody has been willing to touch that because it seems like impossibly hard. Um, but Egalia has a working prototype in Chromium that was funded by work by uh, IO. So we think that's like fantastic. We're excited about that. So what I'm trying to say here is like, this is a really good thing. We can accomplish great things if we work together. And that's great because we all move forward together. Um, so it is kind of a commons that we should all try to play some kind of role in. And we don't know what kind of roles we can play until we talk about them. So uh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. In fact, I have a podcast, Egalia Chats, where we have an entire series on improving the health of the web ecosystem. So if you're interested in that, check out a lot more. Uh, but really key to this is thinking about how we expand investment and prioritization, the ability to prioritize beyond these couple of very few vendors. Uh, so one way that we're able to do that is we are the maintainers of WPE, which is the WebKit port for embedded. So if you go to webkit.org slash download, you'll see it there. And it powers like billions of embedded devices. So, well, why does this matter? Um, well, another example. So if you don't know Sarah Drasner, she is an SVG guru, enthusiast, expert. Um, and she's long been a proponent asking for hardware accelerated SVG. This is actually a really difficult problem technically for reasons you can listen to on our podcast, uh, but uh, is very difficult to prioritize because for a lot of the web, SVG is not sort of the top priority. Uh, but this work is coming to WebKit and the reason that it is coming to WebKit is because of cooking machines. Uh, well, not exactly just cooking machines, but all embedded systems. So this is the Thermomix TMZ6 by Vorwerk. And that little screen on there is an embedded WebKit. Uh, all of these things in, you know, car infotainment systems and video games and televisions and, you know, appliances and digital signage and point of sale, they're all using the web to make their interfaces. And what's interesting about embedded is that it is actually of core importance to have hardware accelerated SVGs there because these devices are less powered. They all have a GPU for the most part. And um, the kinds of interfaces that you frequently want on these are more SVGs. So that's really important and we're able to help bring new investment that will benefit everyone. I think that's great. Um, but also just why do we even have the model that we do? Like why, why should even a single organization have to fund the development of a standard. Maybe that doesn't always have to be the case. So we also ran this uh, experiment last year that we'll probably continue called Open Prioritization, which is a partnership with Open Collective in which we collected funding for, from many sources to fund some work. So we think that's really interesting and we hope that that helps sort of decentralize the ecosystem of investment and our ability to get things done. So, okay, but decentralizing the web itself, uh, it's a big challenge. It's the kind of challenge that we like. Uh, it's a big challenge for a lot of reasons. Um, and all of these reasons, you know, pile up and each one independently is subject to all of these prioritization filters and budget constraints and things. And so the investment from, you know, the main browser vendors might not be as great as everybody would like. 
But that's okay because we can supplement that. And so uh, that's what we've been doing. We've been working with Protocol Labs. Uh, Protocol Labs has funded a bunch of work in this area from Egalia. We have worked on improving register protocol handler. Uh, the HTML specification uh, neither matched implementations nor allowed for some usefully workable definitions. And so we sent patches for things like making sure URLs are well specified and that they work. Uh, then implementations in Chromium for uh, like how do we define like what are the safe URLs that you can register? What are the safe protocols? So we're still sorting that out. Uh, we landed this pull in uh, Chromium that adds the distributed web protocols. And we have an open uh, PR for HTML for that. Uh, along the way, we have done just tons of fixes of things like service workers and URL encoding and parsing uh, for how these interplay in protocol handlers. But also, there's just these bigger ideas like secure context and potentially trustworthy where like the specs are built, you know, reasoning about the web that we had. And so sometimes things need a better definition. So this, these concepts, Chrome internally had at least six different interpretations internally. Uh, so we've done a lot of work to fix those things in Chrome and define, you know, what is a trustworthy, uh, potentially trustworthy URL. And, um, one of the big improvements here has to do with um, local loopbacks and that, you know, can you trust them? So you can in Firefox and uh, now you can in Chromium. And we also uh, have done an experiment in uh, GTK and WPE, which are two ports of WebKit that Egali maintains. Um, and we're opening discussions based on those prototypes with Apple. Uh, we've also added extension specific features because the register protocol handler approaches, you know, one aspect of it, but uh, there are, you know, different concerns when it comes to extensions and while they're getting more standard, there are um, differences. So this is a lot better now in Chrome. This list would be really, really long. I'm just going to show you a bunch of links and say that each one of these things represents, you know, a discussion, a pull request, uh, an issue where in, in many cases is, you know, a lot there to each one of these links. And it's, this is only a partial list, but each step along the way gets us closer. Um, so there's a lot left to do, right? Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about like a couple of things that we're looking forward to doing, uh, challenges that we're looking forward to solving. So one of them is the Chromium architecture. Chromium ar architecture has these sort of two layers, the Chrome layer and the content layer. The Chrome layer is sort of the browser around and the content is the stuff inside. And they communicate via IPC and, you know, there's different kind of calls in and out. Um, but this creates some real interesting challenges because currently uh, all of the, you know, the, the check to find out if something is safe uh, is at one layer, but then the actual handling, the handling of the protocol and the, the registration of it and everything is left at the Chrome layer today. and. This creates a, a, just a bunch of interesting problems. Um, how it integrates UX permissions and things is not really great for um, like supporting lots of things in even web platform tests. We, it raises interesting new questions. Uh, in web platform tests, for example, you only are dealing with the content piece and so you don't even have these. Um, so this is also really problematic for downstream variation. So if you're downstream Chromium and you wanted to support things, everything is currently at the Chromium level. So you have to, you know, have your you have to bring all of your own stuff for that if you want to have it in the first place to have it actually work. Um, and and then you have to deal with you, you know your fork and rebasing and constant breakage and things. So we would like to move this and uh, you know change where different bits live and uh, allow even the shipping of default handlers at both levels. We think that would be really good and it would really help with downstream and we think it could answer a lot of questions for how we would do things with web platform tests to get better universal coverage. Um, so that is what we have been working on and some of the things that we're looking forward to. Uh, there are plenty more things, but if you have questions or comments or you wanna talk, uh, people from Egalia will be around. You can reach out to me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Brian, wherever you are. Uh, if you've been 
hanging out in the Zoom chat here. We've been we are, there are some Magalia folks, and we have been talking about uh, just how fascinating it is uh, the deep dark corners of the web platform and all the things that need to be fixed and how any one of those fixes can really impact millions, hundreds of millions of end users uh, making, and, and now yeah, millions of developers making their lives easier too, as browsers implementations are more interoperable, more compatible than developers' jobs, our, our daily lives become easier. Uh, so thanks for that. And uh, there's also a blog post that we'll send out on Twitter too, that has a, a very deep exploration of the fixes and the nature of the work that we're doing. Next, I would like to introduce Tom and 